All right, let's try to get a high level overview of the information that we're going to need to store in our database. There's, for me, there's really two parts here. And we're going to try to break all of that down here in this section of uh, looking at the database. So, so let's just, at a high level, look at the two parts. Um, we're going to need to maintain a, and we can do this in memory. This part doesn't have to be on disk. That's the cool part. So th I think of it this way. We're going to have an accounting sort of database, but that's not written to disk. That's going to be in memory. And what this basically accounting database is going to contain is for every address that we've ever seen in the system, it's going to contain their balance. All right, like at a high level, just think of that. There's going to be a little bit more information we're going to need to track at an address level for security and to make sure we, we don't have what's called like double spends and things like that. Anyway, a little bit, but uh, right now, like, we, we don't need to talk about that. So just think of it here, counting database, the address and the current balance. That's it, right? You need to track that. Now, that balance is going to be based on all of the transactions that occur in the system. So the other part of the blockchain is going to be those transactions. So here's the idea. And if you go back to the, the, the earlier videos where we talked about the version control system, so let, let's kind of bring some of that back in a little bit. So this is our node, right? This is our node. So a bunch of transactions are coming into the node. Remember, there's a bunch of transactions. Here they are. They're coming in. They're, Again, there's a from and a to that's going to affect the accounting. So they're coming in. And remember that they're going into, they're going into the memory pool. So they're going into the mempool. All right? Oh, and we're so far away from implementing this stuff, but we'll get there. Now, eventually, our consensus algorithm is going to kick in, whether it's proof of work or it's going to be our um, proof of authority. Well, our consensus algorithm is going to kick in and it's going to basically take these transactions. It's going to create a block. Think of a block as a batch of transactions. Have you ever done any sort of accounting stuff, especially with credit card systems? You have that nightly batch where everything is reconciled. I like to think about it a little bit like that. So what we're going to do is take those transactions, okay? Um, the transactions in, a, in that order, whatever order we, we choose. And we're going to pull them out of the mempool. Right? We pull them out of the mempool. We put them in a block. And then eventually, after consensus and all that other stuff we'll talk about, um, that block gets written to disk with those tra four transactions in it. Right? And, the very, and each block will have a number. So maybe that's block one. That's written to disk. And then what we can do is we say, OK, from an accounting perspective, we this balance is based on all of the transactions in any given block that's been currently written. Sometimes we say the word sealed, but written right to this, this chain. So now a bunch of new transactions come into the system. Consensus runs again. We create another block. We add those transactions to it. The whole thing runs. And then we end up with block two eventually being kind of sealed into the system. And then the accounting database it starts to get updated. That's the idea, right? And we'll have new addresses. And if we ever restart our server, let's say, well, we wanted to start from, from scratch, building up the accounting database, all we would need to do is read Genesis, bring in those two addresses with their money, and then we could start reading the blockchain, each block at a time in the right order, and start walking through these transactions and apply the accounting back to this sort of accounting database. So this doesn't have to be persisted. It can always be recreated right from scratch, right from the beginning, by just walking through these blocks. That's really the idea. And we're going to be able to do that even in a distributed way. Eventually, the idea is that we should be able to validate that everybody's accounting database is the same on every node um, based on any given particular block that is the accounting database is up to date with. We're going to be able to do so much auditing here. It's going to be a lot of fun when we get to it. But this is what I need us to think about right now 
um, in this section. The idea that we're going to have transactions, so we need some transaction types. Eventually, they're going to be um, mined into a block, right? So they're batched together on a block. They'll be sent over to every node. The node will eventually add that block to its current blockchain, and then those transactions will be processed to maintain these summary, uh, 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 the balances of all these accounts based on that, that last block that's there. And all this can be distributed and audited. It's going to be really, really cool. So the, the, the first thing that we're going to start to talk about are the transaction types. We need the transaction types because this is where it all begins. The transaction represents the from, the to, the value, and that's what gets eventually applied to the accounting. So, so the next step we need to do is kind of look at the different transaction types that we're going to have on the Arden blockchain.